So, as William mentioned, just a little bit over two months ago, I got married. Um, we would, uh, you wouldn't believe, but actually it is quite an experience uh, for every guy. Um, it is a major success. We get a new boss. Um, so we were sitting together with my newly wedded wife a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm turning around, we're watching something on the telly, I'm turning around, and uh, I'm mentioning to her, I, uh, I'm missing a few puzzles in my, in my success formula, and Ted is coming, and uh, I don't think I'm going to be ready. She looks around, uh, blunt face, um, and points at me and says, well, it's, it's absolutely simple. Success is preparation plus luck. My million dollar face uh, probably uh, spoke uh, very well of, uh, of that reaction. Um, but then when I started thinking about this, uh, uh, this formula, I, I asked myself a question, well, really, is it? Is there something that needs a little bit of a tweaking? Well, let's digest it for a moment. So we all are wondering what is our main motive for actions. Uh, we try to understand them and try to understand what is pushing us forward. Uh, we're all uh, rational people, we can get things done and we can get anywhere. Things get complicated whenever um, emotions come into the play, uh, just as we heard before. Um, this is real, real game changer at that point in time. So I actually believe that emotions are the main drivers and uh, accelerators of all of those decisions that we are taking in our lives. Um, Effective leaders nowadays understand those invisible forces and uh, what they try to understand them better in order to move others forward. Uh, as we all know, um, Tony Robbins, very passionate uh, speaker, quite well, well known passionate speaker, he always asked uh, the, ask the questions, have you failed uh, in achieving something important or significant in life? Um, so picture this situation, a college graduate from uh, in, in Boston, um, I think I've got uh, the world at my feet, uh, uh, owners and everything. Um, I got this job before I even graduated from college. So I, um, I uh, turned down the jobs from GE and, and a few other big companies and I chose this smaller company. Uh, to work for. I agreed with my bosses at that, well, future bosses at that time, that uh, I would go home for, for, for the summer, I would come back in September and start fresh. Huh? So I'm coming back uh, all rejuvenated after a full summer of partying, the school is over, um, and off we go, uh, we're ready to go. Uh, make that call, and here's the discussion that I have. Um, Yarek, uh, as a matter of fact, we haven't been doing so good uh, in recent months. Um, Actually, we have been bringing heavy losses to the company, and uh, I'm really sorry I can't take you on right now. Um, I actually think this company is going to go bust in the near future. As it turned out later on, three or four months later, it actually did go bust. But here I am, jobless, homeless, away from home on another continent, uh, no family around, only a few friends, one of whom gave me uh, a shelter um, uh, to stay for as long as I needed to. Uh, and in long story short, in a space of less than uh, 12 months, I managed to go from the busboy, uh, 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 waiter, bartender, kitchen help, um, the shift manager uh, of the restaurant, uh, all the way to the actual restaurant manager. It's actually in a space of maybe less than 11 months. Uh, believe me, it can only be done in America. Um, but at that point in time, I actually quit the job. I said, Right, this is the point when I needed to prove myself that I can actually do it. Plus, well, I had a limitation on my visa and they would have been kicked out anyways. <laughs> so, at that point I realized, I realized it's not about resources that you have or, or you don't have, it's about resourcefulness. It's about those emotions that put you to those actions and, and make you act in a certain way and, and take decisions. And then uh, it's how about, it's, and then in the end it's about uh, how playful you are, how creative you are, uh, that uh, the more creative you are, the, the more you can achieve and the more people you can get to for the time being. Um, so I'll take you back a little bit more. And uh, I'm 16, 1996, uh, Poland just uh, got its independence uh, a few years back, as we heard earlier during one of the speeches. And uh, I read in the paper, uh, Bill Gates is coming, uh, uh, 
coming to Poland for the first time ever, or coming to uh, Central Eastern Europe for the first time ever in his life, for one day visit, uh, giving a speech uh, at the conference in Warsaw. Um, and at the time, I was all Microsoft. I was obsessed with everything that he was doing. Uh, there was no internet, obviously, for us at that stage. So uh, I read his book and, 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 and shared some other of his ideas. And I had to be there. I had to be at that conference. It was, the tickets were horrendously expensive. My parents couldn't afford it, and so what did I do? A young, naive boy, as I was at that stage, I decided to write a letter. Um, the real one, not, not the ones that kids uh, nowadays don't really know what the le proper letter is. Um, so I actually wrote, I wrote not one, I wrote actually a few more. I wrote Microsoft Poland, uh, Germany, UK, and obviously US, uh, Bill Gates himself, of course, um, and, and any other names that I could get my hands on. So the time was progressing, and obviously the conference was closing in. I'm not gonna get it, I'm not gonna get it. Uh, I lost all my hopes until the one last final week before the conference arrives this envelope, beautiful Microsoft logo in the top left-hand side corner, I open it up, there it is, your dream ticket. But there was something else inside of it. There was this note, Bill would like you to be there in the front row. A week later, I'm there in the front row, a 16-year-old kid uh, with his free ticket. Uh, whenever he looks at me, he knows, and I know that he knows who I am, or he knows exactly who I am. He comes down after the, his speech, shakes my hand and says, well, thanks for all those letters, all 30-something of them. Uh, you gave me no choice, but I had to meet the guy who actually sent them. Um, resources, resourcefulness, emotions, and creativity. Why? Because decisions that we take shape our destiny. Now, not so long ago, uh, Alan Ini from uh, Boston Consulting Group uh, started working on a few uh, new theories. Um, and he actually claims that revolutionary ideas come about when we doubt our existing view of the world. Um, and this is, where, this is around the time uh, when uh, the term of radical originality started floating about. Uh, this term is about uh, uh, promoting risk, uh, risk taking on one side uh, and on the other side, um, culture that accepts the failure. So inspiration is when um, or the new ideas spring out, uh, or the in, in, uh, innovation springs out, as David uh, mentions, whenever we have those colliding points of different ideas, perceptions, knowledge, brought together that haven't met before, and, and something new bursts out. Um, people get their inspirations from connecting all of those independent ideas and a new, giving, some, giving the birth to something new in the world. Um, um, Steve Jobs mentioned, mentioned always that creativity is all about connecting the dots. My wife, who works down south in Google Dublin, um, is allowed to spend 20% of her work time on developing new ideas that are completely unrelated to her work, everyday work. So here we are, we go through our life uh, uh, as, as normal, according to the rules that we know that usually are the, 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 the safe rules. And, but whenever we talk about radical originality, we're actually talking about uh, destroying the status quo. We're moving uh, with uh, uh, um, new ideas. We want to develop them. We want to converge them into selection of those that are most probably going to uh, those that are most probable to, to, to guarantee the success. And then obviously there is divergence, which is a relentless re-evaluation of them. Um, in 2013, I took part in a survey run by IBM. And uh, they asked over 1,500 CEOs from over 60 countries, what is the next big car um, leadership characteristics that is needed in, in nowadays or in the near future? Um, the main trait, uh, the number one trait that came about uh, and highlighted that the, in the current more and more complex world, fast-paced world, the number one characteristics that everyone is out there is either looking for already or is going to be looking for depending on the industry is creativity. Remember this guy, the Fosbury Flop 1968 uh, Summer Olympics in Mexico? Your ultimate aim is to create a genuine game changer with longevity. 
You want to even innovate through creativity. Now we got uh, today's, uh, this year's theme of getting there. Um, since I'm here uh, in, in Northern Ireland for quite some time, I wanted to share my certain observation in relation uh, uh, to this country. Last year, as, as many of you have seen, uh, Peter Robinson mentioned about uh, his, one of his dreams uh, about uh, stopping the duality of, of the schooling system in Northern Ireland. And I couldn't agree more. Um, when I was... Uh, um, digesting this idea from a business point of view a little bit, uh, I stumbled upon the girl named Tadora Svitak, a young girl from, from, from California, very passionate speaker who talks about creativity from a children's point of view. And I could relate it very well to Northern Ireland. One of the very first and most important questions that kids actually put forward is, why overcomplicate things? Um, the kids are perfect risk takers, so let's take the risk, join the communities and move, uh, move this forward. Because, why? Because kids don't care. They're already beyond the, uh, the, the boundaries, the limits. Uh, they got their Facebooks, Twitters, social media. There is no limits anymore. Um, and the moment you actually are putting those limitations on your kids, you are limiting their creativity. Whenever you're limiting the creativity of your next generation, you are limiting the future of the entire nation. So if I come back to this, uh, to this formula for a quick moment, uh, there you could say that there is one vague uh, term over there. It's called luck. What on earth is luck? One could say, well, pff, this means this, this means that. Well, but there is actually a formula. I love formulas. I absolutely love formulas. But there is a formula. If, uh, luck is when determination meets opportunity. So if we plug it back into the, our origin, original formula, you get opportunities that are created by uh, creativity of ourselves. Uh, you get uh, determination, which are your emotions that we talked a second ago, and you get your preparation with your homework. So if we join those three together, what are you going to get? Success is your creativity. Your creativity is your success. Thank you.